Hello, I am one of the respiratory therapists from Midwest Medical, and today we are going to go over the operation and use of the LTV 1150 ventilator. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the right side of the ventilator. On the very top of the right side, you have a filter, and there's a cover that goes over the top of the filter. This filter needs to come out approximately once a week to be cleaned, or more often if necessary. You want to be careful um, when you're taking the filter out because there's a cover that snaps in over the top. And you want to be careful when you're taking the cover off that you're not using anything to poke in there like a pen or a screwdriver or anything like that. Because if you do that, you can do damage to what's behind the filter. So you can just take your fingers and it'll pull out. Sometimes you got to work at it a little bit, but it will come out. And then there's a filter that needs to come out and it just needs to be rinsed out with warm water, um, air dried and put back in. Now what some people will do to make this easier to come out is they'll take a twist tie and work it through the cover and then that will give you something to grab onto. Now you don't have to do this, but it's something you can do. The thing you want to take care of is that you put the twist tie on while the cover is out of the ventilator. You never want to do this while the cover is in the ventilator because then again you can, you can poke um, something behind the filter and you can do damage to the ventilator. So this is just another tool to make it easier to pull this cover in and out. And then when you put it back in, you actually have to push on the sides and it will snap into place. If you don't do that, it's going to fit in there real loose and it'll pop out. So you have to snap it in so it fits in there nice and tightly. Now I'm going to skip down to the bottom. There's another filter down here. There's no cover over this filter. It's a foam filter and it just needs to come out again weekly when it looks dusty or dirty. Rinse it out with tap water, squeeze it out and let it air dry and then pop it back in. Now in most cases you'll have more than one of these filters so you can take the dirty ones out and put clean ones in immediately and do your cleaning because you do not want to run the ventilator without the filters because then you're going to get dust and particles that will go inside the ventilator and it'll, it can affect the ventilator and cause it to not work anymore. Alright, the next thing we're looking at here is your power cord connection. Now your power cord is going to fit right into this cord and there's a little push button and you'll snap this in and in order for it to come apart you need to push on that and it'll pull out. Um, you want to be careful when you're pulling on this that you don't just pull it out without pushing on that on that little um, connector there. If you do you're going to damage this and it's not going to lock tight and it's not going to stay together. You also want to be careful where you're putting the cord so it's not somewhere that's going to get pulled that can pull that apart. Now this plugs into the power cord which plugs into this box and then is going to go into my wall outlet. Um, you also have the capability of connecting an external battery, which I have right here. Now your, your battery cable is the same on the end that will connect to your ventilator. The other end looks a little bit differently though. Um, so I'm just going to show you this will connect. And then the other end is going to go into your external battery, which I have over here. The other end of the connector has three little pins and there's three little holes in the battery and that just pops in just like that. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is where your oxygen connection is. There's a little green cap right here that's going over your oxygen inlet port. And what you would do is just take your um, oxygen tubing going from your oxygen source and you would connect right to that port right there. Um, you don't want to ever um, add oxygen externally in the circuit, you always want to connect to that port right there. If you're not using oxygen, you can just keep the green cap over the top. So that is the right side of your ventilator. Alright, now we're going to look at the other side of the ventilator. On the top of the ventilator, on this side, you have your speaker for your alarms, for all of your audible alarms and you want to make sure that this doesn't get blocked with anything. You always want to make sure that you can hear those alarms. Then below that are your connections where your tubing circuit that's going to connect to your patient are going to attach. 
I'm going to start down here on the bottom <clears throat> where your large bore um, tubing is going to connect. You have a connector that's coming out of the ventilator and you are going to connect a back bacteria filter to that. Um, the filter is different diameters on either end and the larger side is going to connect to your ventilator. So you just want to push that on nice and tight. And then on the other end your tubing circuit is going to attach. Just like that, your large bore tubing. Up here above that you're going to have um, connections for your, your sensing lines. And if you look at these you can see the ends all look different and you are not going to be able to mix these up because they're only going to attach one way. So if you start over here on the side, your first connection is just going to be tubing that's just going to push directly on. So you just make sure you push that on nice and tight. Then in the middle is going to be your yellow connector. And um, those just twist on, but there's a little trick to doing that that I'm going to show you. If you grasp the tubing between your thumb and your finger and you twist it towards you, when you push that on, it'll, it'll automatically spin backwards and that'll give you a nice straight connection and then you just need to go ahead and tighten it. So I'm going to do the same with this one and you just twist it on so it's nice and tight. If you don't get these on correctly or tight enough, you're going to get a disc sense alarm on your ventilator. So if you ever get that alarm, that's something you can check, is to make sure that your sensing lines are attached correctly. And also that you haven't gotten any condensation in that tubing. So this is what it's going to look like when it's connected correctly. And your tubing circuit then, um, this is just a tubing circuit that you would use without a humidifier. If your patient is on an HME, um, if this is what they're using for portability, you're going to have a circuit without the humidifier. Now if you want to add a humidifier in line, what you would do is you would disconnect the tubing from the bacteria filter and then you would have a shorter piece of tubing that would connect from your bacteria filter to the humidifier and then your air is going to be humidified and then your, your ventilator circuit that's going to your patient is going to come off the other side like so. So you're just adding the humidifier in this circumstance. Um, so that's everything to do with that side of the ventilator. Okay, so now we're going to look at the front of the ventilator and we are going to look at where all the settings and controls and alarms are and what they mean. I'm going to start at the top of the ventilator where you see air pressure and when the ventilator is on, this will be a manometer that will be showing you how much pressure is going to be generated um, with each breath. Below that is a display screen and what you'll see there are some different parameters that the ventilator is measuring from your patient and also any alarms that you have will show up on that screen. Next to that there's a little box that has a few different things in it. The top one is the patient effort light and whenever the patient is um, initiating a breath on their own, this will light up patient effort so that you'll be able to know that. Below that are three things that will tell you some stuff about the battery. The first light is, is going to be lit if you have this plugged in to an external power source and right now it's green because I have it plugged in to a wall source, a wall outlet. It will also light up green if you have it plugged into an external battery because those are both external power sources that is being used to power the ventilator. This ventilator also has an internal battery. So if you have it unplugged from the wall and unplugged from the battery, this external power light will be off and it will be running on its internal battery. Now, whenever you're transporting your patient or taking your patient out and away from anywhere where it can be plugged in, you always want to have another external power source, some sort of external battery. The internal battery should only be used for very short amounts of time and um, in an emergency situation because your internal battery will only last about 45 to 60 minutes tops and you never want to be depending on that if you're out and about. Of course, if you're just going to be 
moving your patient from room to room or in and out of bed, you can go ahead and use the internal battery, but you don't want to use it for any extended periods of time. So um, the charge status is going to tell you when that internal battery is being charged. And it will either be um, green, amber, or red. And green will tell you that it's charged. Amber will tell you that it's charging. And red will tell you that the needs to be charged. Um, the battery level light will also tell you um, what level what level the battery is is at and when you're using it on the battery that's when you'll see that light illuminate so if you have a lot of time left on your battery it'll be green if it's starting to get lower it'll be amber and when it needs to plug in and be charged up it'll go to red um, down here in the control box this is where all your um, ventilator settings and controls are and these will all be ordered by your physician I'm going to start down here on the bottom. Here's the on off switch or the on standby switch. So when you're going to turn the ventilator on, you would just simply come over here and you would push this button and your ventilator would start working. That's the same place that you would shut it off. Next to that you have um, your mode settings. And there's a number of different modes that can be used on this ventilator. The first um, choices you have here are volume or pressure. So this can either be a volume or pressure ventilator. Um, so you can either set in a prescribed tidal volume or prescribed pressure, and then that's how the ventilator um, will be delivering that breath to your patient. Um, some other modes that are also used along with that are assist control and SIMV or CPAP. A lot of your patients will be in assist control mode, and in that mode, usually what you would do is set a volume or a pressure, and then the ventilator would um, you'd also set a rate, and the pressure, the ventilator would give. Keep going. Just keep going. Doing that. Go up, we, the pressure we, rate. The ventilator is guaranteed to give um, the the rate that you have programmed in and also the volume that you have programmed in. But the, the patient would be able to initiate a breath above what you have the rate set at. Um, in SIMV it works very close to that, but instead of the patient initiating a breath that would be delivered by the ventilator, the patient is able to um, initiate their own breaths and breathe their own breaths above what the ventilator is set at. You also have the capability of using the ventilator for CPAP. Now next to that you have your inspiratory expiratory hold button and also a manual breath button. Then over here on this side is your control lock button. And you are able to lock this ventilator so that no one can come along and accidentally change a setting or turn the ventilator off when you don't want that to happen. Up above are your um, the rest of your settings. The first one is your breath rate. So that would be ordered by your physician. It would just be prescribed how many breaths per minute that patient's going to receive from the ventilator. The next setting would be your tidal volume. And that would be the amount um, of that the patient's getting for each breath. Next to that you have your pressure control. So if you were setting a pressure on this, that's where you would set how much pressure the, pet, the ventilator's going to be delivering to your patient. Next to that is your inspiratory time, and that is how long it will take that breath to go in. And then you have pressure support, which is another pressure setting. Over here, um, you have a sensitivity setting, and that's usually not prescribed by the doctor. That um, can change sometimes with your patient, and that is a setting that makes it either easier or harder for that patient to initiate or draw in their own breath and sometimes we have to um, play around with that a little bit to get it just right. Over here um, we have your alarm settings and there's a number of alarms that are set on this ventilator but there's only three that you will set on the front of the ventilator. The other alarms are all set up with an internal menu. Um, the first one is the high pressure alarm and the next one is the low pressure and then you have a low minute volume alarm. Um, Next to that, then, you have your silence reset button, and that is where, if you have an alarm, where you'll reset it, or you also have a one-minute silence for any alarms. Up on top here is your vent in-op. 
light. And whenever you turn your ventilator off, you will get that little red light to go on underneath there. Down here is where your PEEP setting is. And um, if your patient's prescribed with a PEEP or a positive end expiratory pressure, that's where that setting would go. And the set value knob is one of the controls for helping you set some of these alarms, which we'll go through a little bit later. So that's everything that's on the face of the ventilator. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the ventilator on. If you go down to the bottom corner of the control box is your on standby switch. All I need to do is push that button. It'll go through a quick little self check and then it'll start ventilating your patient. Um, for demonstration purposes, we have the um, ventilator hooked up to a test lung. All right, so if you look up at the top, you can see your, your airway pressure manometer is up at the top, and this is showing you um, how much pressure is being generated with each breath for your patient. Now that airway pressure can, can um, vary from breath to breath. Um, because in the assist control volume mode, it's not a setting. Um, down below that, you'll see a display screen, and it's showing you a number of different things. It's going through and showing you some different patient parameters. Um, so those are some readings that you may be interested in looking at when you're doing your vent checks and may have to write down on your vent check sheet, depending what your protocol is. If you want to stop it on any particular setting, all you need to do is come along and push this select button and it'll stop on a setting. Right now it's showing us the breath rate or frequency. And if I want to scroll through and look through the rest of the displays, I can just push this display button and it'll move through and I can leave it on as long as I want. If I want to go back and put it to the automatic scrolling, I can just hit the select button two times in a row quickly and it will start scrolling through again. Now if you look below at your, in your control box, you'll see um, the settings that are lit up. Only the settings that um, are important in whatever mode you're looking in or any of the settings that are active in that mode will be lit up. As you can see, I have it right now in volume and assist control mode. So my pressure settings are not lit up, and that's just because those don't come into play in this particular mode. Now I'm going to show you what happens if um, I change to a different mode. Down here on the bottom, where the, where the mode selections are, there's a select button. And if I push that button right now, you'll see some things happen. So I'm going to push it. It's going to be flashing the pressure mode. I'll push it again, and then now it's going to change it so that it's in a pressure and assist control mode. And you'll notice that the tidal volume blanked out, and now I have one of the pressure settings. Um, if you came in and your ventilator was accidentally set in the wrong mode by somebody, you would need to know how to change that back. So in order to change that back, what I would do is come over here, push the select button, push it again, and then that would lock in my tidal volume. So it's important when you're doing your vent checks that you're making sure that all the settings are correct, and if they're not correct, you would need to know how to change them back. Now, um, say I came in and, for instance, my breath rate was incorrect. I'm seeing right now that my breath rate is at 16, and I know my orders say they're supposed to be at 14. So the way I would switch that back would be to push the button that's right underneath the breath rate, and then you can see the other settings blank out, and then I go over to the set volume knob and I turn it to 14, and I hit the button again and that will lock it in. Um, so over here, if you go over to this side, this is where you would set your PEEP, your positive end, positive end expiratory pressure. Um, what PEEP does is it leaves a little bit of pressure in the lungs. It keeps those lungs and airways open. It can help prevent pneumonia and other problems that the patient can have. To set your PEEP, you're going to want to make sure that you have your patient off the particular ventilator that you're setting. You're going to hook up your test lung. Then you're going to come over here and you're going to push this button and you'll see everything blank out except the PEEP. 
And then again, I will take my set value knob and I will turn it to whatever it is I want my peep set at according to the orders. I push that button again, it'll lock it in. So it's very easy to do. Now I'm going to talk about the alarms that you can see on the front of the ventilator. Um, there's a number of different alarms that are set internally on a different menu, but there's three alarms that you can set on the front of the ventilator. The high pressure, the low pressure, and the low minute volume. Now these are typically not ordered by a physician. Um, they are set according to what particular patient needs it to be set at, according to what his pressures and his volumes are at. Um, so a high pressure alarm can um, be caused by any sort of obstruction in the tubing, water in the tubing, if a patient needs to be suctioned, if a patient's coughing, or even sometimes if a patient is speaking. And what would happen is you would see that we have the high pressure set right now at 60. And you can see that the pressures that our pretend patient is giving us is running a little over 30. So if something occurred to make this pressure go up above 60, you would get an alarm. And I'm going to demonstrate that. So you saw we got a little bit of a high pressure and a high peep alarm. High peep alarm you don't see on the front here, but it was one of those other alarms that I was talking about. So um, what you can do now, it's, it's done alarming and your pressure has gone back down below 60 so we know the problem is solved. So I go ahead and hit the reset alarm and everything just goes back to normal. If the pressures were staying up above 60, it would keep alarming. You would be able to silence that alarm for 60 seconds, but once 60 seconds was over, um, it would keep alarming. So that wouldn't really solve your problem. What you would need to do is figure out why those pressures are up above 60 and, and solve that problem, whether it's water in the tubing or patient suctioning or something along those lines. Low pressure um, would be some sort of leak or disconnect in the patient's circuit. Um, so whatever you have your low pressure set at, um, if, the, if the pressure would go below that, then you would get a low pressure alarm. So I'm going to demonstrate what that would look like. So right now I'm getting a disc sense and I'm also getting a low pressure alarm. I'm going to connect, find out where my problem is. Okay, it's, it stopped alarming so I'm going to hit the reset. Okay, so we reset all of our alarms that went off. Um, if you didn't solve your problem again, if there was still some sort of disconnect or leak in your circuit, the ventilator would keep alarming. Um, the, the last alarm that's shown here is a low minute volume alarm and um, that would also go off if there was some kind of leak or disconnect in, in your system. It can also be a problem at your patient if you have, if the patient is having some sort of leak or if they're, um, they're cuff on their trach tube, if, you've, if, if that has been deflated you can also get a low minute volume alarm. You'll also notice that we got a disc sense alarm. And that's something that we talked about earlier. And if one of your small tubings on the sides becomes disconnected, you can also get low pressure disc sense alarm. Anytime I get a disc sense alarm, this would be the first place that I would check. So again, I'll just come and reset my alarms and we're good to go. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to turn the ventilator off. Um, what you want to do is come back over here to the on standby button. You're going to push it and you're going to hold it in. And then when the ventilator is off, it's going to give you that alarm and you need to come over and hit the reset button. And then you'll notice your vent in off light is on. That's perfectly normal. It will do that anytime you shut the ventilator off. I hope that this has been helpful to you, and if you have any further questions, please give us a call at Midwest Medical at 763-780-0100 and ask for respiratory therapy. Thank you.